Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host Mark Guido and welcome to the beautiful southwestern corner of New Mexico where we are staying in Silver City. We're going to share not only the history of this mining town with you, but also explore the Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument, the unique geologic features of City of Rock State Park, and some beautiful scenery around this stunning corner of New Mexico, so stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you from over 44,000 listings, either on the web or on their number one ranked mobile app. Try all of the pro features free for 90 days by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. It's barely over 40 miles from Silver City to Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument. So it's difficult to fathom how it could possibly take someone two hours to get there. This is why. The road is narrow and very winding as it climbs through the Pinos Altos Range in Gila National Forest, crossing the Continental Divide with numerous 15 mile per hour hairpin turns. Most of it is barely a lane and a half wide. Believe it or not, this is a New Mexico state highway with only a two digit state highway number. We're traveling this week with Linda and Jamie of the YouTube RV channel, Roaming with Rosie. Apache leader Geronimo was born near here at the headwaters of the Gila River. Route 15 dead ends at Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument, created by proclamation of President Theodore Roosevelt in 1907 to protect extensive Mogollon Cliff Dwellings. The first European contact with the Gila Cliff Dwellings was by Henry B. Ailman, an emigrant to New Mexico who was residing in Silver City at the time. In the summer of 1878, Ailman and several friends were summoned to serve for jury duty, and in an effort to avoid the summons, they organized a prospecting trip to the Gila River, where they subsequently came upon the site of the ruins. To visit the cliff dwellings, visitors must hike a one-mile, one-way loop trail. So we're here with our friends Jamie and Linda from the YouTube channel Roaming with Rosie. Uh, and uh, guys, are we ready for a hike today? We yep. are. Let's head up to those cliff dwellings. If you're not yet familiar with Roaming with Rosie, we'll put a link right here up on the screen so you can go back and check them out for yourself. Thankfully, Cliff Dweller Canyon provides ample shade from the New Mexico sun that's still intense during our mid-September visit.
The Mogollon peoples are believed to have inhabited the region between 1275 and into the early 14th century, during the Pueblo III era. Archaeologists have identified 46 rooms in the five caves on Cliff Dweller Canyon and believe they were occupied by 10 to 15 families. Tree ring dating has determined that the wood used in the dwellings was cut between the years 1276 and 1287. Gila Hot Springs Campground is a private business owned by Alan and Carla Campbell, descendants of the very first park ranger at Gila Cliff Dwellings. It offers tent camping and natural hot spring pools beside the Gila River. These hot springs have been used by the Campbell family since the 1940s and vary in temperature from 147 to 154 degrees Fahrenheit, although the water in the soaking pools is much more temperate. Day use of the springs costs $7 per person for two hours, between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily. On our way back to Silver City, we'd also like to check out the trophy bass waters of Lake Roberts. There are two U.S. Forest Service campgrounds along the shoreline of 72-acre Lake Roberts, and one of them, Mesa Campground, offers electric sites with a view of the lake for $15 per night or $10 per night for sites without hookups. RV travelers would be advised to arrive at the campground via New Mexico Route 35 from San Lorenzo rather than attempt to follow New Mexico Route 15 from Silver City. At an elevation of nearly 6,000 feet, only three miles from the Continental Divide, Silver City's climate is much cooler than most of surrounding southwestern New Mexico. The area was known for its copper veins during the time of the Spaniards, but discovery of silver ore deposits brought American prospectors to the area in 1870. Silver City was a typically rough and violent western mining town. Pocaralis lived here for a time, and Butch Cassidy and his Wild Bunch gang were reported to frequent the Silver City saloons in the late 1800s. Grant County Sheriff Harvey Whitehill was the first lawman to arrest Billy the Kid, who spent his teenage years growing up here, and his mother Catherine Antrim is buried here. Whitehill arrested the Kid twice, both times for theft in Silver City. Thank you. 
Silver City had originally been designed without adequate planning for stormwater runoff. Uncontrolled grazing and deforestation in the surrounding area over time contributed to ever-increasing levels of runoff. On the night of July 21, 1895, a heavy wall of water rushed through the city's downtown business district, leaving a trail of destruction. A ditch 55 feet lower than the original street level was created in what was once known as Main Street. Businesses on Main Street began using their back doors on Bullard Street as main entrances, and eventually were permanently used as new front entrances. Today, what was once Main Street is known as the Big Ditch, where a local park has been established. We're sitting down to dinner with Linda and Jamie to discuss the approach they're taking to transition to full-time RV life, which is somewhat different from the route that most people take. Next Wednesday night, we're going to take a break from our current string of travel episodes to sit down with Linda and Jamie for another Grand Adventure RV Roundtable. For our visit to the Silver City area, we're staying at Manzano's RV Park a cozy 25-site full hookup RV campground a few miles east of town. Rates here cost $35 per day or $210 per week. Owners John and Barb are former full-time RVers who left the road a year ago to purchase Manzano's, and their experience shows. Just take a look at the patio at our site. John recently installed an open-air covered pavilion he's nicknamed the Green Room, where guests gather nightly for a BYOB social. But lately, on Saturdays, John's been cooking up a barbecue feast for guests, and amazingly, it's all on the house. Oh man, this guy's a ringer. You'll find Manzano's RV Park and over 1 million other campsites, reviews, and tips at our video sponsor, The Dirt. Pro members even get the ability to search for a campsite while outside of cell service or Wi Fi range, as well as trip routing, public land map layers, and campground and camping gear discounts. Best of all, our grand adventurers get to try all of the pro features free for 90 days just by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. Click on the link down below in the video description to try the Dirt Pro for free today. 
Today, Silver City is home to a little more than 10,000 residents, most of whom are still engaged in the mining industry. The surrounding hillsides still bear the scars of mines both past and present. The Chino and Tyrone mines still produce copper to this day, and mining still drives the local economy. The charming hamlet of Pinos Altos was formed as a mining town in 1860, following the discovery of gold, just a few miles north of present-day Silver City. Despite the creation of the Pinos Altos Historic District in 1984, the town remains off most visitors' radar. It nearly escaped ours too, but we're extremely grateful that we paid Pinos Altos a visit.
about 45 minutes southeast of Silver City, along the road to Deming. City of Rock State Park consists of large sculptured rock formations rising as high as 40 feet and separated by paths or lanes resembling city streets. The bedrock here was created nearly 35 million years ago by a volcanic eruption. Then, over millions of years, erosion sculpted the unique rock formations seen today. A small RV campground near the park entrance contains nine water and electric campsites. However, the ring road surrounding the rocks leads to another 41 dry campsites embedded within the rocks. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed exploring the area around Silver City with us. If you like this episode, it is extremely important to us that you give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, we would love to hear from you in the comments section. We air new outdoor adventure RV travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, make sure you go smash that little red subscribe button, the one right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every grand adventure. We'd be honored if you share the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.